Here, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get close to each other. He's like, not always very graceful. <laughs> What's that? As, look, as much as I don't want to say it, I am. <laughs> it's not things I like. Hey, to you talk talked about. about burning some bridges today earlier, didn't you, John? You talked about burning them bridges. Yeah. Lord have mercy. Amen. Well, hopefully my wife appreciates me today. It's Pastor Appreciation Week. Yeah. If I've been worthless as a husband, <laughs> just maybe I've, I've not been too worthless as a pastor. Um, but no, I've, I've, I just, I wanted to do something different today. And, and not me, but evidently God did as I was praying as we talk about our church, our membership, home church covenant and all that kind of stuff. And he gave me about marriage. And, and so let's talk about that today. And, you know, I, I preach a little bit from the scripture and stuff like that, but it, it takes two to make a marriage, and I think it takes two uh, to get up here and, and talk about that, that marriage covenant and the things that we've been through. Because all you guys see on Sunday is the highlight reel. That's what we see of your life is the highlight reel. Amen? And we know that when we walk out those doors. <laughs> The makeup all comes off and life gets real. <laughs> Amen. When, 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 you hit, when you hit the car. Lois and I have been through so much. And I want to start by saying this. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just so much. I, I mean, we, we don't have enough time, but... One of the things I always said when, when the Lord got a hold of me in the penitentiary, I said, God is faithful. God is faithful. And I got out of the penitentiary and I backslid. And in my backslidden state, I met her. And she was backslidden from the Lord as well. I had no clue. My wife was raised in a godly home. All of her, all of her life was raised going to church. If the church doors were open, we were there. she was there. Amen. So I didn't know this, but God knew this. He knew what he was doing. I said God was faithful, but I didn't really know or understand his faithfulness until maybe about eight, seven, eight years ago when my eyes really started to get open after I had drugged my wife in our name Life is different for her today. She says she, she doesn't know how to act because I tell her things like, you don't have to be ashamed anymore, honey. You can stand up and say stuff in church. And uh, she says, it, but it's new for me. This is different. I said, honey, I said, people from the past can say whatever they want, but you're not the wife of that crackhead. Yeah, that's that guy that can't keep his word. All that's, She's married to that so and so I can't imagine what that was like for her because my wife Lois has always been gold she's always been gold silver and precious stones I could have never said she's been unfaithful to me God taught me faithfulness and when I look back at our marriage I can see the same things. See, Jesus said this statement. He said, whatever you do to the least of these, you've done unto me. Well, that's a two-way street. The things that I was doing to my wife, I was doing to Jesus. When I committed adultery on my wife and drug her name through the mud, I was committing adultery on Jesus. If anybody in this life besides my mother has sacrificed for me, has loved me, has been there for me when I should have been put six feet under, has been my wife. In the conviction that I would carry, I couldn't sin in peace to save my life. 
God, she's got a big <laughs> mouth. Don't smack me. And I praise God for my wife's big mouth. One, it, time, one time I kicked the garage door in like I was some uh, big killer. I had to tell him something because people kept calling the house. And I would answer and they had to hang up on me. And we had caller ID so you knew who it was. And I went out and I kicked that door in as hard as I could. And I started run, running my mouth. <laughs> I said, I'll be blah, blah, from across the street, blah, blah, said things that weren't nice. And as I stepped through that door running right my mouth, they were all in there. <laughs> so I finished my rant, and I turned around and stomped right back into the house. <laughs> I was afraid I was going to get killed that day um, because this different yelling at him. But they didn't like Scott's old lady. Oh, goodness. And I hate that phrase. That's my least favorite phrase old lady me and my old lady i am older than he is by three weeks but i am not an old lady <laughs> nor at the age of 26 do you want to be called old lady but uh that's that's just funny to me that um i see things different i i was i was horrible he thinks i'm gold and silver and stones and i was mean and nasty and I prayed bad things not good things <laughs> there were times I was praying for mercy for us that he would I don't know go away forever if that's what God wanted um they were prayers I'm glad were not answered Amen. um in the midst of all that mess that we did live in um I was there every day. It wasn't fun. But if he had had cancer, would I have walked away? And not everybody understands that. Cancer, that's a sickness. Drug addiction is a choice. <laughs> it is. It is, a, it, it is, and then it becomes more, especially when you're living on the other side of it. And I, I, it's not anything I have to worry about anymore. I don't have to. <laughs> I don't have to worry about where the money is going to be. It's, it's different. <laughs> it's different. And, and I, I wish my kids were here to see this because they still, it's hard. They've seen a lot of not nice stuff. And um, Jonathan was out last weekend, and he got to see, he got to see Dad in his, in his new life. And... Uh, I said, oh, here comes some of Dad's friends. He said, Dad's got friends? <laughs> I said, yeah, he does right now. He's got friends at this time. He, they're not just acquaintances that he goes and sees. These are his friends. They love him. And he smiled a little crooked smile that he has. And he said, I know, Mom. So even, even our kids see something different. Look, and, and if they see it in me, they're seeing it in you, too. That's why I say don't don't give up. They might say the hardest, stupidest. God, they say the dumbest, dumbest thing. Stuff. Anyway, but I want to get focused back on Sorry, on the kids. I'm back on um, me and me. And tell them. Here's something that I never understood, and, I, and and I'm I presented this question to Lois, and I'm going to let her give the answer. Because one day after I came to myself, and I realized the grace <coughs> and the mercy that had been poured out on my life and my marriage. And in that, God showed me the peace, the patience, the long suffering. <laughs> Jesus was walking with me that whole time Amen. in my wife. Yes. <laughs> Showing me just like God says, you can look at creation itself and you know that he's real. But I look at my wife and everything we've been through and my God, I don't care if, if you brought people in here that didn't have legs or stood them up out of wheelchairs after 40 years of, uh, of being paralyzed. I had never seen Jesus more clearly than I have in my wife and in our marriage of what it means to be crucified with Christ. And I look because how I treated my wife was how I was treating Jesus. 
And I thought I had a walk with, with Jesus. I didn't. I was living that lie, that greasy grace lie. And my marriage was under that greasy grace lie. And all my wife ever wanted was a godly husband to stand up and do the right thing. Amen. But I asked my wife this question one day. I said to her, after I'd come to my senses and realized all that she had been through, I said, why? Why did you stay? And her answer to this day blows me away. Tell them what you said to me. I'm not sure which time I said what. Um, About not letting someone yeah, else. But I, I, <laughs> after all the junk that we had been through, um, I wasn't uh, going to walk away and let some other person come in and get what was supposed to be mine. At the time, I don't even know that I really knew what it meant when I just blurted those words out. Um, but there was no way that my children and myself were going to be cast off to the side and some new little something come in and get what we're supposed to. I took all the junk. I want all the good stuff Amen. now. Amen. And he says that all the time. He, he, or I shouldn't say all the time, but it comes up occasionally. And I'm like, I, I don't even really know other than it wasn't said in uh, not nice terms either it was not it was not said nicely when i did say it but uh yeah somebody and to see where we are compared to where we were i, I don't have words and i can I tell you this it words. don't it don't matter what little hot rod comes strutting through here i can tell you people this there's nobody more beautiful to me in this world than my wife. <laughs> Physically, emotionally, but spiritually. Oh my goodness, Lord, she shines. She shines. God has used her to be a light of my darkness. I can't see anybody else. Sitting with me through the night at the hospital, is he going to live or die? There's never been a time when I have been sick, lost or undone, that she has not been there with me. If I've ever seen the faithfulness of God in my life, the long suffering of what Christ went through and what he goes through for us, I have seen it in our marriage. I have seen it in our relationship. And I wouldn't want anybody else to have that. Because I've known this is what my wife is supposed to have. A, a seat of honor. When all she was given was shame. But God gives beauty for ashes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and see, that's the thing. That's why I wanted to share this today. Because... There might be somebody listening or thinking, you know, I'm done with this marriage. I'm, I'm done with this relationship. Man, see, pray. I mean, if it's not physically abusive, I mean, if you're safe. I mean, I don't know. Just do whatever God tells you to do. You might have to separate for a little while. But keep praying. Keep believing. I'll, go ahead, sweetie. Earlier in Sunday school, you said it was an arranged marriage. We didn't cross paths as young people, but there were times when we were real close in proximity to one another. Same buildings, same people that knew people. It could have been arranged and we didn't even know it. I mean, all, yeah. I, all I know is this, and I'll share this. A buddy of mine from prison, I'd gotten out, he was out, and he said, man, I want to set you up on a blind date. He said, you got a girlfriend? I said, no. He said, well, I got a couple for you to choose from. And he gave me the name of one. He said, well, if you're just looking to get lucky, he said, give this, he gave me this name, and it was her best friend. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> 
<laughs> and he said, he said, if you want a nice girl, he said, you probably want to go out with Lois. And I said, I'm not looking for anything crazy. I said, we'll, we'll go with that Lois. Because I'd never heard the name Lois. Lois before other than out of the Bible. You know, Lois, your grandmother, Somebody's Eunice. great aunt. Yeah, their grandmother, all that good stuff. But that night, hold on, look, two, two things occurred that night. She walked through the door. And I was playing that guitar. And I was playing, uh, I can't think of the artist's name, but I was Tim playing McGraw. Tim McGraw, Don't Take the Girl. Johnny's daddy was taking him fishing, you know. <coughs> and I'm sitting there playing that when she walks through. And she walked in the door, she heard me playing. And I look up, and she smiled. <coughs> and my world changed. The course of my life changed forever that night. All I knew was, was, was light had walked into the room. I had never seen a smile so big and so pretty, you know. And uh, she was not sleazy like the women that from, from the lifestyle that I come. I mean, that's just the lifestyle that I came from, you know. I came from leather jackets and, and heavy metal and, and motorcycles and, and, and rough people. And uh, That was not me. I, that, and of course. I was the exact opposite. And, and, and I had never felt anything like that in my life, and I didn't realize that that was God. Our soul connected. I've never connected, never seen anything like that before. And, of course, I tell her, you know, I tease her. I say, you know how I like to do things. I said, I saw some, but something pretty and new and had to destroy it, you know, had to go tear it up. And there's, there's a lot of truth to that. But I had never seen anything so beautiful, so radiant in my life. Her nails were perfect and, and beautiful and done. I've never I had seen. Just got them done. I had that. never seen anything like that before. And all I could think is, Dewey, this girl's out of my league. Why did you set this up? And we went and we saw a movie called First Wives Club. So we went to a chick flick. I don't know if y'all know. Well, in the in the movie, First Wives Club is about all these wives that had been jilted by men that left them for younger women, and how they got even and took everything. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> So that kind of, maybe that's why that plays <laughs> into the story. You want to let somebody else get what was supposed to be hers. That might, that might be part of that, it. That I might don't. be. But I remember we'd held hands a little bit. And at the end of the night, we had parked cars at UDF across, there in Norwood across from my buddy's apartment. And we went, went to say good evening to each other. And she leaned in to get her son. <laughs> And he stuck his hand out for a handshake. <laughs> I, I, all I knew was she was different than anyone or anything I'd ever come in contact before in my life. I didn't want to kiss her and, and defile. I just and, and I said, can I call on you again? I sounded like I was out of 1934. I'd like to court you. I want to shake your hand. It was I would have went to that. Hold on, <laughs> and, and, and so subsequently after that, we, we had our we had our third we, we had a second date. I don't know where we went. I know we went to Wendy's or something like that. We were in a Wendy's parking lot, making out or something. I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, hey, look, we were not living for God at the time. We're we're just being real here. And uh, all I knew was I was in love, head over heels. I'd never had anything like that. Now she could have called the cops on me for stalking. She worked like a third shift at the United Dairy Farmers in Norwood, and I would get off work or get done doing the stuff that I had to do, and I had a decent job, and I would sit all night. I would sit for six hours and wait till she got off work so we could go have breakfast together, and I'd pop in and out of the store and get stuff. Sometimes I'd stay in there for two, three hours talking to her, but if I could have walked around that store marking my territory, I would have. <laughs> Amen. That was mine. I wasn't going to lay. I knew other guys were trying to talk to her. She was different. I wasn't going to let anybody else get what was supposed to be mine. Amen. Just like she said, she wasn't going to let anybody else get what was supposed to be hers. And finally today, after all these years, and we're not done. Because I'm still in training, I'm still learning to put my wife first. It's hard, especially when you like music, equipment, art. <laughs> Amen, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I hear Debbie piping, yeah. Hey, it's hard, ain't it? 
But I see the looks on, on everybody's faces in here, and I know that all of you relate to what we're talking about on some level. The healing that God had to do because of the damage that was done, you guys will never understand. And maybe you will, maybe you do. The shame, the humiliation, the hopelessness, it'll never change. He'll never change. Because I kept dragging God's name through the mud too. Until I truly repented. Until I said. This and nothing else. That's when life changed. That's when our marriage started to change. That's when ministry started to explode for real. It wasn't just about talent or he could play guitar, real changes, real things. My character began to transform, and God began to open doors that had never been opened before. And I didn't realize that, you know, I always talk about he was training me for a pastorship under Brad Blankenship for those last two years. Well, for the last 25 years, he's been training me for my pastorship Amen. under my wife, Lois. The same transformation that has taken care taken place in our life can, will, and has taken place in your life. We wanted to share this today so that some of y'all that have been married 51 years plus can laugh at us a little bit and say, keep trucking, kid, keep going, you got a long way to go. Maybe, maybe it brought back some good memories to say, hey, we remember the hard times too. Or some of y'all said, hey, maybe I haven't been the, the greatest spouse. But I heard a testimony today that Jesus changes things. Amen. That Jesus can take the most stubborn of hearts and turn it around. And if you'll just hang on a little bit longer, just keep believing, keep praying. Don't just throw something away. Don't just throw something away. You got anything else you want to tell you want to say up here? You can throw me under the bus if you want to. Hey, you know, here, here's one of the things I love, okay? Like, that, okay, now we've said all the sweet stuff. Even if we're getting there, and, I, and, I'll, and I'm, hey, I'm going to throw something good out there, you guys, because you guys share a little bit. It's quarter till one. Jerry's not back with the chicken yet, so we'll give it a few more minutes. And even as even where we're at today, hang on just one second. Even where we're at today, still in the car this morning, I get God. This is why I like driving to church by myself. <laughs> she said, "This is why I like driving in my own car." Amen. Because even still, we're it, we're still brothers and sisters in Christ. And when you've been on literally on top of each other for twenty five years, you know. It's good to drive alone sometimes and, and get a break from the other half. You know, if we're driving in this morning, I don't even know what it was. What, what did you say that to me, honey? I couldn't, I aggravated. shut up. I wouldn't <laughs> shut up. There it was. I wouldn't shut up. Oh, I kept aggravated. I said, what was I? I know I was hard on. because we were going to be late getting you here. We were going to, oh, oh, green beans. Gosh. It was over green beans. <laughs> she said, I want to stop and get your, I said, what's well, already nine o'clock. We're not going to get there till this and this. <sighs> and, and she's like, well, I'll just run up to the store. And this is what, I, okay, so this is real. This is very real. And she says, so I'll run up to the corner store and I'll get some beans. And I said, really? So that'll put you back at, at quarter after 10. And I said, we're trying to get stuff started on time. And you know what they're going to be saying in their minds? Well, okay, so it's for everybody else but the pastor's wife. And if he had just said it once, it would have been okay. I, I, I heard it. But I, I did. heard it. He didn't. He did not. Hold on, I had to be like, now scripture what? says, Peter says, it's not grievous for me to say the same <laughs> things unto you again. <laughs> and I was but, mad. I threw my sandwich in the dashboard and I said, shut up. She was smashing you know what he ate. She said, this is why I like riding I like, in my van. I drive myself. Why I drive myself. <laughs> so, so no matter. Over some green beans. Now, mind you, I got those green beans, and I was back before If she was still here on time, look, for some reason, I don't know what God did with time this morning. We were late. We shouldn't have got her until five minutes till. And she's like, 
Look at that, 944. It was 944. <laughs> look at him and give me a look. Look at that, 944. <laughs> Can I get my green beans? <laughs> like, shut up and get your green beans, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's not the nicest word, but we use it all the time. We're not hateful with shut up. Yeah, yeah, we're not, yeah, we're not like that. Yeah, no. Shut up is also a term for I love you. Right, right. I also tell. I, a, it is. Like, when the, like, like it, when, when the wife cooks something really good. Uh-huh. I look at her mane, and she's like, was it good? I'm like, you better never make this trash ever again as I'm shoveling it <laughs> right, in as fast right. as I can go. <laughs> so just the little quirks of marriage, the quirks of our relationship, of, of, of who we are. Um, I, I, I don't ever want to give anybody the impression that, 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 like Paul said, you know, I don't claim to have attained, but this one thing I do, we're going to forget the stuff that's behind and we're going to reach forward. Because sometimes it's good to forget the things that are behind the X's, the junk, and, and, and the junk, and we stay. don't and we don't bring up like you said. The worst thing I can do is bring up a past name and and, and stuff like that. And uh, and she's laughing because I make fun sometimes of, of of the X. And my wife is very tall. He was very short. But just so you know, my <laughs> wife, my wife at the age of 19, 18, 19 years old. I always tease her, said she had daddy issues. She got mad, ran off, and got married to some schmuck. They were married for about, what, a year? Now, here, now here's the interesting thing. <laughs> Why did you leave him? Because uh, uh, well, he was a cheater. He liked other women. Yeah. I wasn't okay with that. <laughs> but that's why I asked that question. Why me? They weren't soulmates. He didn't know Jesus. He never knew Jesus. He wasn't raised in church. She was, I was. God knows what he's doing. Amen. God knows what he's doing. Go ahead, Connie Beverly. You'd raise your hand. Uh oh. Uh oh. They didn't make it? Well, I guess we're eating whatever. Is it, did he ask for it under Scott? I heard him make the call yesterday. It's not under the church name, it's under Scott. Yeah, it's under my last name, White. Or White, and it's got my phone number. My phone is three. There. And it's three chickens. If it's ringing, it's over there ringing, and I'm. And I'm sure even if it. they if they messed around and didn't cook it, I'm sure we've got enough food for everybody. Amen. So nothing mm. to do with marriage. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes you're hungry. Chicken has to yeah. do with marriage. Sometimes Amen. Sometimes it really does. <laughs> hey, hey, because we're getting ready to have the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. But. Go ahead. Yeah, if you Q and A, ask this question. You about, you know, what are the cars in your uh, oh yeah. Your it was a little crib card. I've been in church my whole life. Seriously, my mom, the flat. I don't know. It's like a week old. And well, I was born on a Friday. It wasn't that Sunday. It was probably the following Sunday. And there was a, when the babies went into the nursery, they registered him in with a little crib card and. I, somehow I wound up with it and digging through boxes of pictures and such. I found this sweet little card and um, uh, an elder lady, her name was, uh, I don't remember, Grandma Gaunts is what we called her. It was Marilyn, sad, remember names, but it, it was this little lady, her name was Marilyn Gaunts, it was her mother, and it's a little, the sweetest little card, and it's got, um, uh, oh, I don't remember the right, cross stitching but not like on the cloth it's just some pretty little knots that are attached to the little card it, super sweet stuff that when I was looking at it at uh, that time years ago it didn't mean anything to me other than yeah I went to church every day if the doors were open I'm not kidding we were there um, and it it wasn't ever a question it was just what we did if if it was not locked down, we were there. She was training um, to be a pastor's wife I as a kid. I didn't, didn't even know it. Had no idea. And as a young adult, made dumb choices and stepped out away from it for I a was while. A dumb choice. Well, you were one of them. <laughs> anyway, I made a lot of my own dumb choices, and um, because you know, I thought I knew better because I was 18 and smart mouth teenager. I should have had somebody beat my tail in real good so that's where mckenna gets it from probably okay i can't help it <laughs> 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 she's way better at it than i was though <laughs> it um and, and when i looked at look at that little silly car it's just a, a card that says you know baby campbell yeah. and i remember 
I don't remember being in the, they had a little, um, they weren't like cribs, it was like a little three bed unit. They had to lay the little babies in while they weren't being held in rocks and such. And I remember being a, a little kid and a teenager and a big teenager and going in there. We used to climb up in those beds and play like we should not have been, but we were little kids. We played in the, those little baby beds. And I, looking back at it now, I so wish that my kids had had that same, and, and mostly they have. I mean, McKenna, McKenna was born in May. We got married in August and was attending church just shortly thereafter. And because um, we did things all out of order, um, we thought we were doing it all. I thought I was doing it all right. And, you know, the world's eyes, it was not right how I knew. I knew better. But because we were, oh, hold on, I got to start over. Because I was a decent person. I didn't, and I tried to keep him in, I can't say even in, under control, because he did what he wanted. Um, yeah. he, and I was trying to hold us together, because I didn't know any other, I, yeah, I wasn't going to let it fall apart, because it, I didn't, that's just not what I was going to do. I liked him when I first met him. There was something, and then shortly there into it, things went amiss, but I still knew that that person was in there. And that, at that point, I wasn't, if that person was going to come out, I was not going to let somebody else get what I wanted. Did you have a lot of feelings about his wife? Did you have a lot of No, oh no, I don't worry about things. I'm, I'm, I don't. I used to worry all the time if he wasn't, well, and back in the day when you didn't have, like, locators on your phone, <laughs> and, like, you could hit the beeper and no answer, no reply, she the beeper, no reply for three days, and you don't know where your husband is, um, hold on, I don't even know what I wanted to call him at that time, my partner, because we weren't married for part of these things, other things we were, and, and I still, then, it was different, it was a different kind of hurt, um, but I don't worry about it now. I, I don't have to. And I also tell him if he wants to go, he get, I won't stop him if something catches his attention. But I, I, that's not where his mind is anymore Amen. at all. Amen. Not at all. Amen. Yeah, it is. You're 100%. Okay, question. It sounds like you had a lot of faith. Oh, yeah. I, and I don't even know that at the time I even knew it. I just... I don't. Well, yeah, and you. Right, right, and I love that for a time as this. Yeah, I can't. The grace and mercy that that was bestowed. I, mean, I can't. I can't imagine. I mean, you guys understand adultery. Let's see if you can understand this. You're 26 years old. getting ready to give birth to a son. You're with someone that's completely unstable. They're with you at the hospital, and they say, Honey, give me the keys to the car. I need to go outside for a minute. And that bastard leaves and goes and buys a quarter ounce of crack cocaine and doesn't come home till 5 o'clock in the morning to his mother's house where his mom's standing outside saying, Hey, you know you're a father. And your son is in ICU. Because some things occurred that he had to be in an incubator. And she didn't leave. I mean, that's, that, that, that's who I was, people. That's who I was. Completely wrapped up in me. Drug addiction. She lived penniless. With nothing. For years. Other than what my mom gave us. Because every penny went for drugs. She spent years in depression, living unhealthy, because the head was sick. Yep. And to this day, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man, what God has in store for them that love him. She loves God. I, didn't, I don't think she knew 
what God had in store for her to become a respected pastor's wife, that God's going to give you beauty for ashes like God with me of all those years of, of being a guy that drug his wife through the mud and everything else, his life is totally different. And God has put me in a position to be a pastor along with my wife so we can get up here and do things like this and, and show you the real, if I could say that. I don't want my life to be scripted other than by that word of God. I don't want to ever come up here and feel like I have put on airs for you people or come up here and put on a performance or a show. If it ain't real, people, I don't want it. If it ain't genuine, if, it, if it's counterfeit, I don't want it. And I also want you guys to see who your spiritual parents and the Lord are in here who your pastor and his wife really are what we go through the fight that we have we still yell at each other you're in my way you're in my way shut up you shut up no you shut up no you shut up no you shut, shut up. up and then look at each other <laughs> and then look at each other smile like yeah like you know I love you <laughs> Just knowing that life is good. Hey, look, I wouldn't want to be aggravated by anybody else. That's the truth. And her. I, I feel the same way. I don't want to be aggravated by nobody but her. I'm okay with it. I enjoy it some days. <laughs> and I enjoy aggravating her a lot more than she enjoys being most, aggravated. Most days. Hey, Amen. Look, there are men in this room right now. If, if I ask you to be honest. All the men in this room. Is there something you continue to do just because you know it aggravates her? Raise your hand. <laughs> if your hand ain't up, you better be at this altar. You ain't got nothing you do. Oh, I see, I see one hand not up in this room. Well, God, does, does his wife need to raise her hand for him? No, she'll not. Hey, that's between you and Jesus. Amen. I'm, I'm going to leave that one alone. Maybe when we hit the 51-year mark, we'll reach that level of, level of protection. But I'll just do certain stuff just because I know I'm going to get yelled at for it. Aggravated. Why did you leave that out? Why did you leave the toilet seat up? So you can see that I cleaned it. You know, I tell her that so it's clean because I get yelled at for a dirty toilet. And then I get yelled at for, and then I get yelled at when I leave the seat up so they can see I cleaned it. How are they going to know I cleaned it if I don't leave the seat up? That's funny because it's a bathroom thing too. So if it's I'm a catch-22. See, a husband, you, ain't, you can't win for losing. It don't matter what you do. If I'm in the bathroom and the door is shut, why do you bang on it real hard? You yeah. know I'm in there. So that's one, hold on. So that's something, hold on. Something that I like to do. Look, something that I do, I do it to her and I do it to my daughters too. Because I know what they're doing. They're sitting in there on that toilet. They've been in there for 25 minutes. Their legs are asleep and they can't move and they're just like this. And when somebody walks past and two feet in front of your face, I'll boom, I'll hit that door real hard. And jump. And I'll get, hey, what are you, you're a jerk. Quit doing that to me. Yeah. Sometimes they are. Well, then, I, then I ask, okay, okay. So, so, here, so here's the thing. So, so I have this heart thing, right? And so when I come to bed at night, sometimes she's already in there. She's laying down trying to go to sleep. Or I'll be in the middle of the night, and I'll, I'll prop myself up. Uh, you know, just kind of calm myself, repeat, make sure I got a good rhythm in the heart. Well, apparently, my breathing <laughs> is aggravating her, because I get a report. I was like, well, tell me the things that I do to aggravate you. I said, what, what is wrong today, honey? Why did I get the... <sighs> And, and I said, what did I do today? She said, you just being you. And I said, what do you mean me just being me? I, and she starts describing things. She says, well, I go in there and I try to go to sleep. And then you stomp up the stairs. And then the lights get flipped on. Then you turn on that stupid iPad with the light. And then you breathe funny. And I said, what do you mean I breathe funny? I'm, I'm just breathing. She says, I don't like it. And I'm like, so I guess I got to hold my breath for eight hours when I go to bed. And I... <laughs> I guess you get your eight hours in, honey. I wake up blue and dead. I don't know, but but then, but you know what? I wouldn't want it any other way. I wouldn't want it any. I already know. God, I better, I better be quiet. I'm gonna wake her up. I'm gonna wake up. Queen Lois, amen. <laughs> no, the, the it's the sleeping bear. Don't wake me. Yes. Is, uh, <laughs> There's a cartoon. A cartoon from uh, my childhood. It's the Droopy cartoon. Remember Droopy? Yeah. You remember the quiet, I hate noise the, bear? Yeah, there's a bear, and 
quiet. I hate noise. That's me when I'm in bed. Don't bother me. <laughs> it's quiet time. I don't want it and dark. Turn that on. I'm a grown up. I don't need a night light. Turn off that light. <laughs> I'm grown. I need the dark. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just doing life together. Yeah, it's not. And I and I and you guys, all of most of you, get that. You just sure. doing doing life together. Go ahead, Deborah. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, I don't see Art anymore. He's hiding in the sound booth. <laughs> I stay right there. <laughs> Look, oh, I tell no. him all the time, go to that other room, and he just won't go. And I'm like, oh. So I roll over the other way. <laughs> <laughs> and then he starts, then he's, <sighs> <sighs> I'm like, I know he's doing that just for arneriness. I know that he is. <laughs> 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 hey, look at all ladies. Come oh, on gosh. now. It's uh, it's time. Hey, you go ahead and start getting it all out now. That's funny. You get it all. If you want to tell on your husband, now is the time to do it. <laughs> I want to hear the pop can. That's a water bottle at our house. And, and 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 we don't know who leaves them half drank. Sometimes it's me. I can say that sometimes it's me, but I'll finish it the next day. But the girls will leave them scattered about. And we have this little old dog. She's so spoiled she won't drink faucet water anymore because he takes those half-drank bottles and pours them in her water dish. And we have, na we have gross water. The faucet water is nasty yeah, in the, the first place. Yeah, the rich water is nasty. That's why we drink bottled water because you can't drink that cloudy tap water. And this little spoiled old dog won't drink that nasty tap water either anymore. She'll come and look at us and run back the hallway, come back out and... She jumps at him and tells him she needs her fresh puppy water. And Amen. it's just half a drink bottle. So, yeah, that's that's everywhere. It's half drank drinks. So who else got a little story they want to share? Anybody you want anybody want to tell on her husband? You don't want to tell on him, Connie? Or, or they Beverly. Somebody. They don't or not. I was afraid to get up here. Really, truly, I was afraid to get up here and that it would go amiss. And I would say, because I, I don't like to talk about that old ugly junk. That's not who we are, and I don't want, I, I don't want people that know Scott now to ever have to think about what he was. Or if you meet somebody that knows him from that time, and they'll say, blah, 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 that is truly not who this person is anymore. Amen. And I don't want to get up here. Uh, that was my fear. I'm like, don't. I, I need a script. I need to know what questions I'm going to get so that I know what to say because I don't want to say something, and it's true, what, the bad stuff. I don't like that. I don't want to spread that about. People that knew us then don't know us now. They, they, and, and there are some people that knew us then that don't want to know us now. No, because they think that that's what we are, and that is not Well, either that, 100%. but some of them hear the message that's being preached, though, too. You know, other side, they don't, they don't like that, that it's holiness. Yeah. Well, wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know you guys were so Right, right. Right. It's real. Right. It's real. Yeah, it'll go online. <laughs> right. Right. Yep. Mar marriages can not only be restored, but I look at my wife and chase after her more now than I think I did when, when, when we first got married. I, I just love her. You know, it, it's it's different, and she's just more beautiful every day to me because of the things we do together in ministry. She's always there to support me. Uh, you got you guys haven't missed a Sunday meal, you know, because I, I know everybody else throws in, but she usually she she heads that up. She's mama. I mean, that, that that's what she does. She ain't gonna let nobody go hungry, 
Amen. And, and that's why I want to show you like like who we are is, is kind of like the parents of the church, the pastor of the church, because we want to see other people that come in here or other people that are already here the same restorative work. Um, or, or to show other people that, that you have something in your marriage, in your testimony, that will keep somebody going, that will save somebody, that, that maybe a husband in here today heard something that I said, that, that they'll go to the altar, or they'll go home and repent, and say, I'm done with that. I'm done with that. My wife deserves better. My wife deserves a husband, a man of God, that, is cruised, that, that, that loves his wife the way that Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. That, that's the character that I'm, I'm learning to work on now. That, that's where we're at in life. That's what I'm learning. And I'll tell you, it comes right into play, being a pastor and everything else. Because if you cannot love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it and treat her right, how am I going to love and, and treat the church and raise the church up right? I, I wouldn't be able to do it. If my marriage wasn't right, I would not be able to do this job. Bob, you had something, and Debbie, you had your hand up too. Go ahead, brother. God is good. See, that's what I want. Is I, I want a church full of these types of testimonies. And to build these types of testimonies, you know, from the very beginning, one, one of the things that I saw uh, for, for just a couple people that were left in here when Lois and I, you know, we come in and took over pastoring, was, was the testimony of marriage that they had the number of years, the faithfulness, the ups and downs, you know, what they've had to gone through, the stories, you know, they, they, their children, most of their kids are, you know, our age, almost our age. And uh, mm -hmm. I knew that this is of great value, that there are going to be others that come in, uh, other couples that need to hear these types of testimonies and see these examples and say, maybe we'll just hang on just a little bit longer. You know, hey, wow, there, hey, there's some things in our life that need to get set right or maybe they'll even look and say wow we thought we screwed things up too bad here in their testimony i don't feel so bad you know <laughs> we, we we might be okay <laughs> but i want this to be a church where marriages flourish yes. Amen. they flourish where people come in and say we're in covenant together that's why we want to do our membership this way and that's why we decided to use today uh, it is the day to talk about that and use marriage as that example. And as a church, we're going to go through things just like a marriage, through ups and downs. We're going to see people come and go in and out of our lives here. Amen. We're going to see people enter into covenant with us. Might see some people break covenant with us, just like we see, praise God, just like we see in the marriage covenant. Amen. Just like we see in the marriage covenant. Mm -hmm. You want to say something? Go ahead. Just um, when you were talking during Sunday school about the <clears throat> animals split in half and that that's what the mess looks like if the covenant is broken. Now, I've heard the covenant story and that the, the animals were cut and then you walk through the blood to make that covenant, but I never had heard it on the other side of it. And that was my parents divorced when I was 15 and it was horrible. And when you're 15, you're already a mess. You don't need anything else messed up in your life when you're a kid. But to think that just that, that's what is left when it's broken. And it just hit me, oh my gosh, that was our poor, that was our poor family. You torn apart and broken and left in a mess. Look, she, okay, so check this out. I know the answer to her question. And, that, and I'm going to share this story, and, and this will be a perfect way to end this. God revealed to me the answer to that question, why did you stick with me? You've already heard Lois' testimony, how they were always in church, her parents. On a Sunday evening, she's at youth group. Wednesday. Or Wednesday night, whatever. <laughs> Wednesday. She's at youth group. I was at youth group. We had gone to church that evening. Because it was Wednesday night, the church doors were open, we were at church. And as far as she knows, everything is good, the sun is shining, yeah. where mom and dad are concerned. It's a little crappy, but, but a little messed up, whoops. <laughs> she comes home that evening afterwards, and what, your dad is gone? They had had a meeting with the pastor. He suggested that he should... 
probably unbeknownst to my wife her unbeknownst to my wife her mother was committing adultery in the marriage she come home one night and dad's gone and mom and dad will never be together ever again and our dog died the day before and the dog died the day before <laughs> it was mom awful. <laughs> mom chose to break covenant and her dad he was so humiliated by all of it and i understand it is humiliation he, he just i'm done He's, he would not take her back with with what had happened and so when i when i look at my wife's story She does never want her children, our kids, to wake up one day. Where's our dad? What just happened to our life? What do you mean we got to live someplace else? Your whole reality is shattered for a child like that. God always showed me, Scott, you'll never preach from your place of pain. You will always preach from your place of healing and restoration. The brokenness that was in her life, she determined was not going to be in her marriage. It would never, what happened to you, would never happen to her children. She was determined. And I know why. She said, I'm not going to let somebody else get what's supposed to be mine because she has had to sit back and watch her dad marry another woman, a godly woman, and have this fantastic life all these good Christmases, good pictures. They live in a nice place. His life is so good. They got a good church. So I understand. She was not going to let her kids go through that. She was not going to have that. And God, in his grace and his mercy, brought this healing in our life. It doesn't make sense. I can't fathom it in my little human brain. But that it, it, it doesn't it doesn't make sense that it should work the way that it he bre Jesus breaks does. the curse. Yeah, Jesus does. breaks the curse of all the garbage that our parents did and stuff that they never repented of that passed on down to us. When we get Jesus in our marriage, we get Jesus in our hearts, just when we get Jesus, things change. Marriage is transformed. And that's all we want to say. Just hang on a little bit longer. Help's on the way. Don't give up. Come come talk to somebody that's been through it. Amen. Let us pray for you. Pray for us. Just know this, that we're all in this together. Amen. We're all real. We've all made mistakes. We all have the opportunity to repent and keep our family and keep our church family. And hopefully we'll instill that into others down the line that they won't throw their marriage away, that they will get Jesus, and they will get healed, and their kids won't wake up one day. Where's mom? Where's dad? What's going on? Or, hey, you got to go live with grandma for a while. We're going to continue to see healing, restoration, and we'll see it propagate itself because the next family that comes in behind it that gets what we got, they're going to want to give it to somebody else. Amen. And that's exactly what we want. Hold on, do you, guys, do you guys want to renew your vows? You guys want to do it right here, right now? Would anybody have a problem if we would renew their vows today? Do you want to, do you want to renew your vows today? Come on. Look, th this is what it's about, people. My gosh, somebody's getting ready to get healing here. Who, who knew we were coming into a marriage today? Give a hand clap. Praise God. Well, this would be my first as a uh, as as a renewing of the vows. We're just going to run this just like a regular, just as if this was your very first time. Amen. Because old things have passed away; all things have become new in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Dearly beloved, and your your name is Rhonda. Yes, sir. That's fine. That's fine. And Ronald, what's your husband's name? I forget. James. Uh, James. James. Do Amen. You guys want to hear my old name or no? Ja no, no. Just we got your new, which is James and Rhonda today. James and Rhonda. Amen. Dearly beloved, 
we have come together in the presence of God and these people to witness and bless the joining together of this man and this woman in holy matrimony in a renewing of their vows and a renewing of their love for each other. The bond and covenant of marriage was established by God in creation and by our Lord Jesus Christ with his first miracle at the wedding in Cana of Galilee. It signifies to us the mystery of the union between Christ and his church and Holy Scripture commends it to be honored among all people. Therefore, marriage is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, deliberately, and in accordance with the purposes for which it was instituted by God. Amen. That's right. Amen. Into this union, Sister Rhonda and Brother James now come to be joined and renewed. If any of you can show just cause why they may not lawfully wed or renew their vows, speak now or forever hold your peace. Amen. Rhonda, you look at James and repeat after me. I'm just going to ask you, sorry, excuse me, Rhonda, do you take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? Yes, I do. To have him to hold till the sweet Lord. Amen. Let him depart. In Jesus' name. Amen. James, do you take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife? Now, she got ahead of me. There's some vows. This is just, this is just, a, this is I do or I don't. Sorry. Amen. You're okay. You're fine. He does. Amen. He does. All right. Then you repeat after me. I, James, I, James take, you, Rhonda, take you, Rhonda, to be my beloved wife, to, be my beloved wife, to have and to hold you, to, have and to, hold you, to, honor, you, to honor you, to treasure you, to, treasure you, to be at your side, to be at your side in sorrow and joy. In the good times, in the good times and, the bad, and the bad, and to love and cherish you always. To love and cherish you always. Rhonda, you'll repeat after me. I, Rhonda, take you, James. I take you, James. As my beloved husband. To have, you, to have you, to hold you, to, hold you, to, honor, and obey you, to honor and obey you, to treasure you, to, treasure you, to, be, at your side, to be at your side, in sorrow and joy, in, sorrow and joy, in the good times and the bad, and to love and cherish you always. Amen. Well, you've already put the ring on her hand. <laughs> Amen. But I'm going to let you go ahead and hold her hand today, brother, her ring hand. And repeat after me. I give you this ring, I give you this ring as a symbol of my love. As a symbol of my love. And with this ring, and with this ring I, be wed. I be wed. Amen. And do you have your wedding ring on today? Will you hold his hand then, sis? Repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love. As a symbol of my love. And with this ring. And with this ring. I be wed. I be wed. All right, you guys, you got your hands joined already. Praise God. Yes. Now, Rhonda and James have given themselves to each other in holy matrimony, and by the power invested in me by God Almighty. And by the state of Ohio, I now renew and pronounce you man and wife. And you guys do have a marriage certificate on file with the state of Ohio, correct? Amen. Amen. So by the power, by the power invested in me by God Almighty in the state of Ohio, I now renew and pronounce you man and wife. May I present to you or represent to you Mr. and Mrs. James and Rhonda Godby. Let's cheer them on. Amen. I want to throw this, but I really, really don't think I want to do that. 
the church. Amen. That's fine. <laughs> there we go. Sister Glenda, praise God. Amen. Well, we're going to close out with a quick word of prayer. We're going to bless the food. I saw Jerry run in with a barnyard. Amen. Did you have something? Amen. Hey, you weren't you were not here. I think you were getting chicken and she raised her hand and, and said some really good things about you. Yeah. We just thank you for confirming it. We weren't a hundred percent sure. But but just Amen. She I, and we know that. Again, another Jerry and Beverly, another great example of marriage in our church. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord God, I pray over this meal that's been provided today. Lord, I pray that there just might be two chicken legs left in there for pastor today. Lord God, amen. But seriously, Lord, bless it, make it holy and pure for us to eat. Continue our time of fellowship and, and love and, and giving today as we just give ourselves over to you, Lord, and to each other as the body of Christ. And let us understand a little better today what it means to be in covenant with one another. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Good Lord, let's eat. Amen.